<laughs> so, so who are you? I'm Aaron. I'm the CEO of Meta. Really excited uh, to show you our home. Yeah, it's well, it's a very uh, unusual place to put a startup because uh, I've been to startups all over the world, and definitely there's a few startups that are in mansions or you know in houses, but. Well, even TechCrunch, right, used to be in a mansion in Woodside, but this is definitely it takes the cake and <laughs> beats all those by far. And who are you? So I'm Ben Sand. I'm COO of Meta. Yeah. And so um, Meta, got, some people have seen the glasses on the, online. I, I, I saw a couple pairs, but what is it that you guys are doing? What are you trying so to do? So we're building a, a two-part system, or we built a two-part system, a 3D input and a 3D output. So the 3D input is based on depth sensors of various kinds. We're loaded with sensors. Um, and they replace the keyboard and the mouse in wearable computing. So you could just reach out and naturally grab holograms and stick them on parts of the real world using that part. Um, and then the 3D output is a stereoscopic pair of see-through augmented reality lenses. State of the art. Um, these things used to cost, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, and we're actually bringing them out of the military just about two months ago just the lens component of our system would cost eleven thousand dollars and now we've uh, obviously brought that down significantly so the 3d output allows you to of course paint graphics on regions of interest in the real world so again 3d so true augmented reality we're true augmented reality and we're seeing a lot of head, a lot of wearables come out you know google glass is probably the most famous one but uh, i've seen motorcycle helmets with a little sure. thing ski yeah. helmet is yeah, ski. honda reached out they want to do yeah. some motorcycle stuff with us but yeah depth truly uh the modern definition of augmented reality the ability to take digital information and register it to parts of the real world well this is the first pair of you know this is the first headset that can achieve that in fact, the guy that sort of uh, pioneered the term augmented reality, as it's commonly known, Steve Feiner, is, is on our team. Steve Mann, the inventor of wearable computing, is on our yeah. team. Um, we had some really, really awesome announcements of more cool people that are joining our team now. Um, and this is it. This is, this is kind of the Tony Stark experience. <laughs> when I talked to the guys who started Pixar, sure. um, they talked about uh, that they knew 20 years ago mm -hmm. that they could do digital films and they needed to wait for Moore's Law to flip a few times. So that's exactly for, what, what happened here. And is that here. what's going on here? Exactly what happened here. So I was doing stuff in the military in 05 and the bill of materials was, was millions um, and I was waiting for it to drop sub $1,000. The moment that happened I basically jumped on it with all of my might. I was there with Steve Mann and Steve Feiner at the time because I had so long to find the, the key players in augmented reality. But by the time the time was right to incorporate this company, I was there with a real you know, dream team of people. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like Waz was waiting for DRAM to be cheap enough. We were waiting for these optics to become cheap enough. Yeah. Uh, and it happened. And it's been a dream ever since. I mean, we've grown to 35 people in the last year, and it just this still is awesome. a little ways from being a real consumer. I mean, you Definitely. can see it hooked up. Like I just saw the Oculus Rift yesterday, yeah. and, that, and that's a wearable computer. Sure, you're gonna sit on your couch or it, in this new uh, stand that you're gonna be able to do some augmented reality. Sure. But you're not gonna walk around the world the way you are with Google Glass. You're really aiming after the world where I walk around with this thing, right? Right. So we're 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 creating an indoor device. Okay. But you do indeed walk around with it. We have this very powerful pocket PC, which or pocket computer, which which uh, connects to the glasses and allows you full uh, access to your indoor environment. Um, but I'm not going to wear that to the mall or to a classroom. Or in you could actually, in fact, you could. there'd be no no reason why not. We're putting a lot of industrial design to actually make this device look more socially acceptable than Google Glass um, and you can see that in our in our latest Meta Pro. Um, we're just creating the most powerful uh, wearable computer out there both in terms of sensors, CPU and GPU, field of view, the kinds of people who are contributing to this project, our love for this project, we're really Trying to, trying to wrap but it's it all gonna, it's affordance is going to have some some use cases right now. You, you talked about SpaceX wanting to get uh, to look at CAD drawings in a right. new way. Correct. With those, you know. Correct. Uh, so so there's there's the the use cases are primarily gaming. I mean, we have we have so many yeah, thousands of gamers who reached out and 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 bought the Meta One. Um, they want to just be able to play laser tag or tabletop gaming with each other. This is a first computer which is collaborative, allowing both of us to play with each other's 
digital information from different perspectives while making eye contact. I mean, could you believe that 10 years ago? That makes you different than Oculus Rift. And Google I'm, Glass. They're both yeah. inherently antisocial experiences. You're pulling away from eye contact when you're, when you're looking at the digital information. Um, in fact, the, the sort of the statement that you're making with, with Google Glass is, it's more important than our conversation that I look at this, that this other information and I'm not sharing it with you right now, so this is more important than you right now. Yeah. And what we're trying to do with Meta is make it more interpersonal and look, uh, a text message just appeared between us, let's edit it together, let's, let's kind of make it a, a collaborative experience and I think a lot of people are getting excited about that and gaming uh, especially. Yeah. Um, the other I, I'm definitely interested in the, in the augmented reality gaming. I, I, I was playing the with Oculus Rift yesterday, and it's really an immersive situation, but you, you have a full black screen in front of you, you can't see the real world. Right, exactly. You can, you can only see the virtual world. You're going to let me look through the virtual world to the real world. Right? That is exactly yeah. the innovation here. Okay. Um, and well, let's go play. Let's go play, yeah. The, the <laughs> and talk way... about some of the sensors and things sure, that, definitely. that enable this uh, new world to be uh, built, I guess. Definitely. The way I see it is there's going to be three primary uh, heads up. Uh, successful streams um, in the next 10 years. The first is the Matrix Machine, which uh, is uh, my name for Oculus, where you put this big thing on your head and you teleport to an alternate reality where simulation and stimulation are king, and it's awesome. And it's a great experience, and it's going to be the primary way we consume movies um, in this new, you know, brave new world. And I, and I believe they will be very successful. The next is, of course, Google Glass. Google Glass is what I call the notification machine. Yeah. Low CPU, low GPU, small screen in the corner of your eye. Tells you kind of pop-up information about your, your environment. Uh, and Oakley's, Oakley's using those with ski goggles, which yep. makes a lot of sense. You, you might not want an augmented reality experience while you're skiing bumps. Definitely, on, exactly. On a and ski I, slope. Right? And I think that's... But that's, you do want to see at the end of the slope, hey, how... How fast was I going? Or how, yeah. what was my hang time? Where, exactly. where on the mountain am I? Right. Which run should I go next? You know? right. And I think that like falls that. under the category of the notification machine of those low CP, low GPU solutions. Um, and you know, Google is king of information. And I think uh, with these kinds of use cases, which can be sort of abstracted into the idea of where, I'm, where my next meeting is, how I get there, and when the next train there is. That's basically what Google Glass allows me to, to explore. Yeah. They're always going to be the winners of information consumption. And I think that Google Glass is definitely going to be successful as that second category, well, the notification machine. And I, I, I know the Google guys. I, Google is an intent satisfaction machine. It's really what I call it, right? Yeah. So they want to study your intent. They want to know when you are walking down the cookie aisle in a grocery store, you know, right. so they can shine some <laughs> cookie ads. <laughs> so so that, that's, that's, something, that's something that's really uh, important distinction between Meta and the Google Glass. Yeah. Um, we're not, we're, we're actually, my background is neuroscience. I'm, I'm, I'm in this game to reduce cognitive load and make sure that this brave new world uh, happens in a way that's that's healthy for the brain and for the body. Um, so I would actually focus on on re removing clutter, and I think it's in the best benefit of a company that 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 makes so much of its revenue from advertising to add more information to your to your uh, to your field of view. And that's another distinction. Uh, we're going to be very very careful and actually make sure that advertisements are way, way, way more minimally uh, and, uh, inserted into this. And they're trying to do that too over at Google, to be fair. They're totally, yeah, no just ads. AdWords and... We need to know what, the, what their business model is with this. I, I have a feeling that Google Glass is going to be a commerce business model because I want to sit at the Ritz and say, hey, bring me a beer. Totally. And if they can make that happen, then all of a sudden they get a dollar and, and the Ritz gets two dollars and, yeah. and I'm happy. I have yeah. a beer in my hand. I mean, right? Google's awesome. I don't have Google. to get up and wait in line and all Go that. Google just makes life more automatic. And, and more sort of easy on us. What Meta's concerned with is the creative aspect of computing. It's about designing things, inventing things, being immersed in our environments and using 3D computing to augment the, the upper part of our intelligence and not to tell us sort of turn right, turn left, five stars on this next thing, you should buy this because it's better than that. And you should get a, a, a task rabbit to do this job for you uh, with that, you know, etc. So, 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 really, we're here uh, as the third category of wearable computing, which is what I call the natural machine. Yeah. The natural machine uses other people in your environment, um, your environment itself as part of the app. 
So it's a see-through augmented reality experience. We overlay information on the real world, um, allowing you to interact with it in really, really natural ways. Um, it is the Tony Stark experience, um, but it's it's much more than that. It's it's a new. Are you constrained by battery life, uh, or are you even uh, trying to take on on the battery issue? Because right. you said uh, it's for inside use, or right. I could certainly see using it like at a workstation, or or like if I was uh, trying to uh, work at Chevron mm -hmm. instead of having a bunch of screens in front of me, I'd want to wear this and and float through the, exactly. the oil field, right? Sure. And try to discover a new pattern. Um, Definitely. That means I'm going to be standing in a room and I'm probably going to have power nearby. Right. And I'm probably only going to do it for, you know, an hour at a time. And sure. It, I might even have several or th sure. three or four of them. I might have. Replay. I don't even know what we should see the glasses so we have some yeah context. let's look. so this before is the, we start this asking is, all the stupid this is questions. the Meta Pro uh, uh, the initial mock-ups that I built I designed the the device um, and this is the the first outer shell prototype which we built yeah. and this is what the actual device uh, is gonna is gonna look like in six months when we when we finish it up but we created a functional prototype with all of the awesome optics and and audio engines and everything that we promised on our website. Yeah, we're going to show you the functional one now. Okay. Um, now building that is going to be a little bit of a challenge because the size of the com of the computer and the projectors. Let me show you how we do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, please take care on these stairs. Yep. There it is, skinny. Uh -huh. Oh, look at this. So this is our. This is where our reality begins. This is like. This is like wow. This, <laughs> this is. This is the cathedral. That's what I'm saying. This is the craziest startup I've ever seen. <laughs> well, how are you doing? Who are yeah. you, by the way? Karen, good seeing you again. Yeah, hey, Karen you? is our vice president of logistics, yeah. and she makes sure this company remains organized. Uh, what we're going to see down there um, are all the algorithms that make this happen. All right. And I'm actually going to take you really up. Is there anything, up. Is there anything secret that I shouldn't be shooting? Nah, we're, we're pretty, we're pretty <laughs> good. We're pretty good. <laughs> so one thing I, I'd like you to do is, is, is um, uh, uh, show the Meta Pro, which is our next generation uh, device. All right. um, it's, it's loaded with the best sensors commercially available and the best materials. Um, the, now, how many people have seen this so far? Uh, very few. Um, yourself and a number of others. Yeah. Um, and the optics inside of it, um, of course, none of this is shipping with this, is just a prototype, but um, these optics used to cost $11,000 only a few months ago, um, and they come from fighter pilot HMDs. So they come from uh, F 16s and A 10s. And um, tell and me about the resolution. Sure, it's 720. Yeah, this is so this is full HD. Yeah, so this is 720p. Um, it's the Google Glass one is like 320 by 240. Exactly. Yeah, it's really, really low resolution. And then noteworthy is that we are 16 times larger than the, in terms of viewable area than Google Glass, 16 times. Um, but we're still maintaining that 720p uh, 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 resolution. So I saw several uh, other sensors on the front. Are, are you doing like a 3D kind of sensor? Oh or? man, this is loaded with sensors. <laughs> Tell me so about we some have we have we have several RGB sensors for for stereo tracking. We have you know depth sensors, IMU, so gyro accelerometer, you know compass. We're loading this thing with everything that developers need to build awesome apps now, instead of having to wait for the next iteration of Google Glass where they might add another sensor, etc. Our philosophy, um, instead of make it sm sexy before it's useful, is make it whatever size it needs to be and then let Moore's Law sort of shrink all the sensors together. And um, therefore our developers are going to have much more use cases and much more flexibility in designing the apps of their dreams from Meta One. Um, and things are just going to shrink. And you see that with Meta Pro, right? If you look at Meta One, which we're going to take a look at now, and it's being assembled downstairs, um, it's much larger, and it's what the state of the art was three months ago. And here we are with Meta Pro stuffing this into the form factor of Ray-Ban aviators. That to me means now's the time in history uh, to be doing this. Yeah. Uh, it's clear, you know, if, you, if you've been around Silicon Valley for a while, you, you realize uh, when you can see exponential decreases in size or costs right. or exponential rises in users, definitely you, you can build businesses, right? Right. And, and things get. I, I remember seeing the first Wi-Fi pro prototypes, and it was bigger than that, right? <laughs> awesome. So now it's you know a Wi-Fi chip is sure. only a tiny, tiny piece on sure. a on a little chip that's the size of your right. finger, right? Right. 
Um, it's it's crazy, and the signals that gave me uh, the the feeling that now's the time are the the growth in number of companies doing 3D sensing. Okay, yeah. so primarily in the infrared side of, of things. So you know you have the leap motions, the prime senses, the the yeah. soft kinetics. These guys are popping out of the woodworks now in this yeah. in this last year and miniaturizing their sensors so quickly. Yeah. Um, and also the growth in the number of companies uh, that do the notification machine category of wearable computing. Yeah. So there's suddenly like recon, dozens recon, recon instruments yes, yes. and uh, Google Glass. Exactly. And, uh, on and on. And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to build the first natural machine, which as you remember, the natural machine allows us to look at graphics in front of us, stick it on parts of the real world, make eye contact, grab it with the things that have evolved to manipulate our environment and just naturally interact with it. This is really hard to show on the internet, is it? Cause it, you know, I, I get 720p flat video and it, right. I, I can't show you what it looks like through the glass. So that's why I want you to put it on and, yeah, and we'll feel it. <laughs> um, but first, let us go down and I want to show you the algorithm. Let's do this bottom up. Let me show okay. you the algorithms that make this possible and then we'll show you this. Great. Sound good? Yep. Let's do it. Let's go. Let me take Again, uh, careful on these things. Yeah. Now we're downstairs. Now we're downstairs. We're in the in the, uh, the Meta Cathedral. So what, um, what are the, all these Epson? Epson oh, these are, they, they build our uh, optics for the Meta One, which we're going to see the assembly line of. Okay. It's, uh, it's, we're really proud of the way we build things here. It's the fastest learning assembly line uh, manned by some of the smartest people that man assembly lines. These people are all software developers, and they're building our glasses. And they're also going to be providing support for our Meta One people. How does it work? Awesome industrial 3D printer builds our shells, our latest shells. They come out down here with these support materials attached to them. Yeah. So you can see over here. Um, these support materials are dissipated inside baths of chemicals and you get the, the, the actual assembly parts for the, for the Metal One device, right? Yeah. We connect them together. Let me take you through the, the sections. So this is kind of a, an area where we, we do initial uh, integration of our components, and you see how, how it looks um, with the Epson optics in the case of Meta One integrated in the outer shell. Uh, we do some initial testing, um, and then uh, we continue on uh, assembly. Um, side note, this is our com computer vision team, and we have pioneered some of the, the first um, uh, surface tracking algorithms that are going to enable this entire revolution to happen. Uh, it's my belief that. So when you say surface tracking, your system looks at like the floor, the and floor, the the various surfaces in your environment, and can superimpose graphics on top of them. Okay. It's my firm belief, and and Ray, our CTO, who's been doing work with Steve Mann for the last ten years. Um, that the reason AR, uh, or as we call it, augmented reality, so the ability to uh, diminish reality or mediate it as well, hasn't picked up, is because it requires a calibration time to augment your reality. You either have to pick up your iPad, scan your environment, and put a point cloud on it, taking a few seconds, and then you could put a Gmail tab on one wall, a Facebook tab on the other wall, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or you have to, even worse, you have to go and print a an augmented reality fiducial marker from a printer, stick it on parts of the real world, and then you could only you know, attach stuff to that printed out piece of paper. That's the state of the art before Meta. Yeah. Uh, this and we've seen that at the Lego store, right? When you go to the Lego store and you pull a box off exactly. the shelf and you hold exactly. it in front of the camera, all those have been uh, pre um, Yes. Uh, memorized, pre-registered, exactly. right? So exactly. they work fast, but you know, somebody took a picture of that Lego box and it, it registered. Exactly. Probably, yeah, probably about 50 pictures of that Lego box and then yeah. like, you know, ran them through algorithms and everything. So it's a very time consuming process. And what you can see here that... Uh, Enter Meta. Enter Meta. <laughs> Enter Meta. Real time surface tracking um, of surfaces in your environment. And you see that, that square over there with the normal appearing on any surface in real time requiring no calibration mode. And you see the actual algorithms happening here behind the scenes. Um, the segmentation, the work with the depth map. We, we work not only with the depth map, but with a bunch of other sensors to create this real, real time tracking. Your floor is being tracked right now. So now you can enter uh, the room with our glasses and with zero uh, calibration at all, 
we slap a Gmail tab on this wall, a Facebook tab on the other wall. The character separate. mode screen, what's going on there? What, okay. What's happening underneath? So that square is attaching itself, the graphical square is attaching itself to surfaces that it detects in real time, yeah. indicating to us that you could use that surface as what we call a canvas, an augmented reality canvas. So I could put a 3D rocket part now with our glasses, I could just dump it on any one of these surfaces and it sticks and it remembers that it was there. So I could then walk around my environment like Tony Stark and I have these objects stuck to the, to the environment registered in true augmented reality form. And that's, that's the kicker. No calibration time, augment your reality. Let me take you to the next yep. step, hand trick. So we have uh, 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 sort of pioneered the idea that hand, that uh, hand tracking can happen at from any original position. Uh, so you have companies like uh, Leap Motion and a number of other companies working on hand tracking, but they all have a sort of a, a position that you need to enter uh, from in order to track you. And the location of the Leap Motion has to be you know below the hand as it enters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for wearable computing applications, you need to be able to come into the frame from any direction. Yeah. So I'm coming into the frame from this direction, from the position of the camera or whatever, and it needs to track my hands in real time. Yeah. So this is what we're doing here. Now, you guys are math geniuses. I, I, I used to work at a, a, a video capture card company, and we did something a little bit like early, early versions right. of that to try to figure out what's going on sure. in the image to be, be able to do compression. Definitely. That, that took a shitload of math and a lot of algorithms. Sure. What's the code base like for this thing? So Ray, our CTO, <laughs> is going to tell you about our code base. Um, well, the major difference between us and other companies is we're using 3D sensors. Yeah. So that allows us to um, actually looking into the structure of the scene. That's a major difference. Right. Why we don't need features. In so now, so time, yeah, it's featureless tracking, but get into the code base. The code yeah. base, um, well, what it involves right now is um, looking at the 3D structure, we basically extract the normals. Yeah. So the idea is like look at surfaces that are actually perpendicular to the world. I mean, now I have a gyroscope and accelerometers. I know where my gravity is. So my code base was okay, looking into any surface normal that's pointing, let's say up, for example. Right. So that's like one of the basic idea, you know, how we can use yep. um, 3D sensors. And, and we, of course, it's much longer for a deep process, but this is the fundamental basic building block. I'll, yeah. I'll really, uh, so uh, let me just, uh, um, I worked at Microsoft for a couple of years and my, my brother-in-law worked at Apple and now my best friend worked, worked on the iPhone team. And they talk a lot about, well, I, I, I saw some of the Skunk Works labs that they had. Cool. And this feels like one of those Skunk Works labs, right? Okay. You get 10 or 20 smart people trying to do something new that the world hasn't seen right. yet, right? Right. And I assume there's others that we just don't know about, right? Sure, I'm sure Apple has a lab like this. There's a difference between right. <laughs> there's a difference between us and yeah. and other uh, labs. And like I know that. Microsoft has a, you sure. know, a 2,000 R and D guys. Sure, it's and a research. Huge building. The difference is we're do or die with this project. We're growing. We're one of the fastest growing startups in the valley right now, um, and. Uh, yeah, and so, so for us, it's betting, like your whole we're betting our whole us. careers, all of us, on this. And people are coming to us, giving up quarter of a million do dollar jobs from Google to join us, um, and they're betting their careers on this. Um, and so this is, this, is, this is it for us. So we're going to make it happen. Um, and we, we invite you to track that, that progress, um, and I'm really happy you're here. Yeah, now this is crazy. Yeah. I, as opposed to a big company who, which could have that kind of research and development, but it's, it's so disconnected from its, its core. We're really mission. seeing a paradigm shift here. I, and it's not just you guys. I, you know, I, I wrote a book about this, right? Age of context, wearable sensors, Definitely. big data, cloud computing, mm -hmm. uh, add, add on social and, and location data, because our world is being mapped at a richer and richer state every, every day. Absolutely. Right? Um, my friend and I, we'd walk around Half Moon Bay and say, uh, the internet looks at the world as a crude world right now. It might have a point of data here, a point of data there, right. a point of data there. And in 20 years, it it's shall gonna... be looked at as meshes, as yeah. 3D meshes. And so you guys are really at the at, at the cusp of a new paradigm shift. I, you know, Waz was at the paradigm shift of, of integrated circuits, right? Right. He walked me around the Computer History Museum and showed me his childhood and. Oh, this computer was great, but it didn't do that much. And every year he lived, it yeah. got sharp, it got better and better. And then and all you know, of a sudden, Waz was our third customer for our first device. Yeah, and of Waz, course he was. <laughs> I mean, he put, he put on these glasses, um, the, the new, the Meta Pro glasses, and he was just so excited. Yeah. We're, we're honored. 
Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. So I talk wise out of forty grand for my journalism department. <laughs> okay. He is always at the tell beginning of. For no, you know, you, uh, no, he's, <laughs> it's been around. So, so, so you can see the. Uh, this is a very prototypey early. Kind oh, this of was stage. the earliest Meta One that we prototyped, and he's just wearing it for for fun. Uh, but we have we have the sort of the more advanced uh, shells, and then the, those that have you know higher end materials. Uh, but yeah, that's that's one of our historical references. How much cash do you need to build a company like this and really um, stay alive eat long enough for the for the the total prototypiness of it to go? Not, away not so much, but we're because my mom ain't gonna wear that. <laughs> no, my no, wife no. ain't gonna wear that, right? Well, that's what the Meta Pro is here right. for, right? That's why we made it based on aviators in terms of shape dimensions. Yeah, whatever. Um, not that much. But we're raising really fast. Yeah. Uh, you guys went through Y Combinator. Yeah, we did. I, I forgot about that. Yeah. This isn't the usual Y Combinator no. program kind of company, right? No, but he was, he was just he was just pumped about just all the implications of this, and he we were the first AR or. Yeah. He's really doing. Uh, you know, Estimos is at headquartered right near my studio in uh, mm -hmm. Geekdom, San Francisco. And uh, he and uh, uh, that was in the last Y Combinator class. He's really trying to see some of these cooler companies coming along that are pushing paradigm shifts and, and really not just doing it yet another copy of Instagram, right? Yeah, that's really, that, that's what, you know, drew us about YC, especially PG. Uh, the, guy, the guy sees a few steps ahead um, and it was such a verification for us and for all of our team members that we were accepted into that program. Um, but it also remove, uh, it also lowers the amount of money needed to operate a company because YC has a company for every one of your needs. Uh, we're bringing in a lot of people from all over the world for this project and visas are expensive. There's a YC company that takes care of that for you. Um, you know, there's just like real, real uh, feeling of brotherhood with, with all of these geniuses that have, have succeeded in, in other areas and they help us overcome all the problems that they had to face. So I think it really, uh, really is an amazing experience. Uh, what, what is actually going on on the screen? What, what languages is he using? What tools is he using? Tell me a little bit about what. Yeah, tell about what, the. Because I'm not a programmer, so I, I, I'm seeing a different guy's world than I usually see, right? So, what we'll do is we'll, I'll demonstrate it while uh, you guys talk about the exact so code. So, behind the scene, um, the engine is based on um, C because we need lots of performance. Uh, on the interface side, we have Unity 3D, which uh, allows developers like gamers to create for nice good looking graphics in a very short amount of time. Right. Uh, the innovation of Meta is to take away the need for a PhD in computer vision and graphics, which was last year the only way you could build an AR app. With one year of Java development, you know, correlating to C Sharp and Unity uh, tightly, you could do anything really uh, with Meta. And that, that is another reason paradigm shift in my mind. So there's, there's a, f yeah, so, so keep going, Ray. Yeah, so, uh, well, as I suggest, we're trying to lower the threshold for uh, implementing any augmented reality applications. And that's why we do these two fundamental pieces, the hand tracking and service tracking. And you can have interaction like you look at the table, touch it. That's very, very difficult to do, even for a PhD. <laughs> and right, but from a low level, low level, yeah, I mean, C++, C++ code, C++. code that's aggr it's, it's aggregating all of our sensor fusion into this place, piping it up via DLLs to Unity. Um, and the C++ is where all the art happens and where I can't go into much depth. Obviously, we use natural feature tracking, but we also pioneered some really, really cool depth-only uh, surface tracking. But at, at Microsoft, the, the kernel team was, was the big brains, right? And it's, I'm sensing that from both of you guys. Right? <laughs> computer vision part here. So yeah, yeah like, uh, like Ray was saying, um, we want anyone to be able to create uh, an augmented reality app. And right now, there's 2 million developers on Unity 3D. Yeah. So if they can just you know, drag and drop a 3D object, and those 3D objects happen to match up to something in the real world, they're not just a virtual game object, then they can just proceed without any new training at all. And these, uh, these hardcore math guys are here making that all possible. That's, uh, that's How defensible is this? Because what, we were talking about this off camera. Um, you know, my friend Andy, uh, who, who worked on the iPhone team, says the, uh, the Pioneer gets a lot of arrows, right? Sure. If you guys have to cut through the bush and figure yeah. out a a new way to build a new a new platform basically and somebody like sitting at Google can you know get your product and copy you and come out very very quickly I mean Android came out very very quickly sure. after the iPhone right sure. 
Um, so this is why this, this computer vision team is working so hard around the clock. This is why our company is growing so fast. Um, is that paradigm shifts like this um, always come from an energetic team that works the hours that we work. You'll see black circles under everyone's eyes here, and I'm proud of that. Um, and, and you might not see that in, in, in larger companies. Uh, we're so inspired. You guys even live here, right? That's why you bought this unique property, and we we walked around it. And right, we're renting, but <laughs> well, okay, yeah. rented. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we live we live and work here for that exact reason because it's our baby, man. We can't we can't leave it. It's not like your office place where you come to and it's like okay. It's like we know that we have a revolu our paradigm to, to to change, and it's gonna be us or one of these big companies. A uh, big company like Google might, you know, want to stuff a lot of information in front of you for whatever motivations uh, related to advertisement or however they make their money. Yeah. Um, and I'm a neuroscientist, and I fundamentally believe that cognitive overload and just interfaces that aren't well thought out are not are not the future. And if I let one of those big companies do it, then we're not going to have the, the impact that we sh we need. You guys are really building a new platform. I, I mean, if, if I visited uh, Microsoft in 1989, it, there would be a room like this, and they would be trying to build a new kind of Windows, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mostly because Apple was already there, and they were trying to copy them. But it go, I'm, I'm speaking in part tonight, right? That's where okay. uh, the Macintosh really was invented, right? And so, so there inspiring. was a room like that of people who were thinking about the future. Um, but those people were building platforms. They didn't know, you know, that PageMaker was going to, well, one of them did actually know what PageMaker might come around. Yeah. But, but he didn't build PageMaker, somebody else did. Mm -hmm. what, kind of, what, what are you building a platform? Definitely. So that this developers is, uh, can build things that let me drag pictures out of Dropbox? From the ground up, this is, this is a platform. Computer Vision uh, is on the bottom, and arguably firm, firmware with our sensor fusion is under the layer underneath that. Yeah. Um, and the layer above that is just these DLLs piping it to our graphics engine. We're just making it really easy for developers to invent the user interaction techniques of tomorrow. Um, and uh, so, yes, this is a platform. It's going to have an app store. We already have hundreds of people just trying to trying to uh, let 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 us know what apps they are going to build for us. Uh, so we we actually created a section of our website for for those people, and it's exploding with the most incredible ideas that I couldn't predict. And I know you know. I know that someone's going to invent a killer app for this, uh, or several. I know that we came up with one that's pretty cool. The idea that we can uh, open, you can open your hand and see a stereogram of your, say, iPhone uh, in your hand, and you can interact with it and control it with your other hand, and for the first time have a weightless iPhone. And that's pretty arbitrary for us oh, wait to a design. Second. You're, you're going back to skeuomorphic design in a whole other way. Right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we got to slap you around a little bit. Get rid of the skeuomorphism. <laughs> Why do we need a virtual iPhone? I know. Think, think, Look, because think bigger can, than that, because, right? Because, yeah, we're, we're thinking way bigger than yeah. that, and we're, and we're acting. But we want to let people know that they could enter this brave new world without saying goodbye to the devices that they love. Yeah. 99% of the apps that we're developing are, in fact, Which the hit. sexy apps. But VisiCalc wasn't sexy, right? It was, yeah. it was necessary. And which, which hit another question I have. Sure. Um, when you come out with a new paradigm, it takes people time That's to uh, change, right? To get used to it, to think, to dream about it, to think about new, new things to do with sure. it. Where do you? Th it, you know, uh, it's, uh, Steve Mann, your advisor, and, and Thad Starner. He's our chief scientist. Yeah, yeah, Thad Starner, who did the Google Glass, he, he designed the Google Glass in 1991. I read his thesis project. How many years is it going to be? Arguably, it was Steve Mann in 1978 who built a helmet with a very similar looking cube of glass and more sensors than Google Glass. 1978. All right, we're uh, but but let, let's not get into that, into that debate. But it took, my point is Look, that it took 20, 30 years for their bleeding edge idea to get out of their head and into a product I could hold, right? That right. I could put on my face. Yep. And what's in your head that you want to build that these guys still can't build? So, uh, if 20 years from now, we're, we're, we're just at the right time. We're at the right Scoble, I finally built what I was thinking actually back in 2013. We, right. We, we, we're building it right now. I mean, um, my dream is coming true right now. I don't have to wait any, any longer. You won't have to wait 20 years. And um, the, the kind of ideas that are actually being prototyped right now are just everything yeah. uh, that we wanted. But here's my answer to your original question. It takes time to change paradigms, right? Luckily, science fiction 
for the last 30 years or more has been dreaming about this and knew exactly what people want. And we're just designing what people want, okay? Iron Man, Avengers, the fact that it's the, the, the third top grossing movie in history, there's a reason for that. It's because those interfaces are inspiring to people. And so humanity has been dreaming about this for 30 years. I made it cheap enough and arguably sexy enough for people to wear, um, and it's happening right now. Um, so I don't need that buffer of time from now until the future to prove to people that this is the right form factor because, hey man, like people have been wearing HMDs and yeah. movies and it's just been, so humanity wants us already. Um, what, that's, it, that's my thesis. Moore's really. Law ain't gonna slow down. I mean, it is slowing down in some ways, but uh, the, the sensors that I've seen coming out of the R&D labs are just mind blowing. Uh, what is going to be possible for you as, as an entrepreneur in five years that's not possible today? Um, I, you know, I think that something that, that feels or looks a lot like contact lens right now is going to hit, uh, hit, our, hit our faces uh, in five years. Um, you think it's that close, that close? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I do. Um, I, you know, obviously, to build this company, I, I've been in this industry for five, six, seven years. And I only incorporated this company in this last year because I've been following all those graphs, right? Um, and the graphs lead to around five years from now, uh, us having those kinds of experiences. It might not be exactly an invasive sort of lens that looks like that, or maybe it'll be a machine that you just look at in the morning and it slaps something on you without you feeling, or something as small and discreet as a contact lens that actually does have a frame. Um, I can't and won't predict, but I do know that it's gonna be in that form factor. The world and by the is, way, I'm a neuroscientist. The, so world, is, I've, I've, the world is speeding up. You know, I, I interviewed yeah. Doug Engelbart before he died, which uh -huh. was really a thrill for me. Wow. Um, but he showed, he showed the world the Macintosh really in 1969, and then it took till 84 to ship it. Sure. Right? So it took a long time. And uh -huh. he got kicked out of his own research lab, by the way, which is Amazing. A, a crazy story. But he explained, you know, we go back to the context of the 1970s. Nobody thought that they would have a computer in their pocket, much right. less on their face, right. right? But the world is speeding up. Sure. Do you see it slowing down or, or do you, no. it's getting crazier. Is it getting crazier because we're all connected now? It's getting crazy. I think it is. It's I mean, Twitter has a, a half billion tweets a day, right? Yeah. You know? I mean, it's it, my the the area of craziness that I love about this about this uh, connection between man and machine is that you know I'm a, I'm a neuroscientist and a third of your brain area is devoted to three dimensional processing of gra of, of, of of visual information, and I these this device that you're you're seeing behind you is the first thing that allows you to, you know, this device right here um, is the first thing that allows you to experience computation in a fully 3D uh, way. And that's, that's why um, I think that Moore's Law is not alone is, it, 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 in this mission to make sensors smaller and, and more suitable for devices like Meta. It's, it's demand from the, from the market. And demand from the market is fundamentally coming from the brain. We want to see three-dimensional objects in space. We want to interact with them naturally, with things that have evolved to manipulate our environments. And Moore's Law is, is, is helping that paradigm along. So indeed, it's only going to get more 3D now. Uh, like you said, you predicted that the world would become sort of mapped in, in, in meshes. Well, to do that, you're going to need a lot of people wearing things like this. Um, and, and I think that, that, that's the, the fundamental uh, stepping uh, stone for us. I dream the same dreams. I hope your dreams come true. <laughs> Thank you. And I hope you become a billionaire. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's a secondary concern. Because you succeeded concern. at bringing in this all from the screen, from your screens to my eyes, exactly. right? Yeah. And that's totally. a lot of work still ahead. Oh, definitely. We're inspired and we're psyched and we're, we're, we're going to do it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So, so uh, I'm meeting all the uh, engineers here at Meta. Uh, who are you? Uh, so, I, I recently finished my master's uh, in Arizona State University. Uh, my specialization and my research is into computer vision and machine learning. So, the first time when I saw the website of Meta, I was, okay, this looks almost like science fiction and I was very interested. Yeah. So, I got in contact with them. I worked, them, I worked with them for a few weeks and I intuitively knew, okay, I want to work here. <laughs> So. Where did you get interested in computer vision? I mean, I, that's not something that most people go to school and go, oh, I want to be a, somebody to build computer vision systems. Okay, basically I'm from electrical background, 
but then in my first semester uh, i wanted to try something different uh, so i took a cor course on statistical learning and pattern recognition from then is where i got interested into that field so i went and contacted the prof and then i started working with him on his research projects yeah. so i tried several research projects and from then on i was very interested in this field. so the, the system you're building grabs my hand very very quickly and mm -hmm. doesn't need a lot of reference points and it builds a skeleton onto it why why are you able to do that so fast when other people ha have to see reference points and things like that um, so uh, we don't need any calibration. Yeah, yeah, so, that's what uh, I'm saying. It's fast. That's what he's asking. <laughs> <laughs> you can explain. You what can was the breakthrough? The uh, in a, the yeah, what, in a general high level, what was the breakthrough that let you do that so fast? Okay, so we are looking at only what is required uh, for us. I mean, uh, once we have the mass, uh, the information the skeleton gives is very useful. Uh, so, uh, like we have everything, uh, the fingertips and the length of the fingers and all. So, uh, this lets you do a new gestural kind of computing with the other other people on the team, right? Yeah, we are working on that. So I'm going to see that in a few minutes. <laughs> Val can explain how we how we do. Thanks so much for sure. um, the hand tracking with with no calibration and. Position well, let's go see it, and then we can come back. Because uh, sure. once I no play problem. with it a little bit, I'll, I'll probably uh, have some more questions. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks.